Amen. Um, I'm sending this out this morning. I've been requesting a couple of times to send a message, so it's been a moment, so that's why you'll see me recording here, okay? Thank you, young folks. How was your week? Good. 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 Anybody have a tough week? I know I did. Woo. I was in the trenches. I was. And you know what that means? Yeah. I was down. And I was like, Lord, come on now. I, I, I ain't never felt this low. And I kept thinking, is this from the pandemic? Because everybody say, okay, from COVID and all that and us being separated, we all have this depression. Then I thought, well, maybe it's because the seasons are changing. You know, because now things are getting darker sooner. I kept trying to think all that. And then finally I had to realize I was down and in a dark place and had taken my eye off of God. Mm -hmm. And you say, well, what do you mean by that? I got to worrying about things that I don't normally worry about. Like, I was wondering what I was going to eat for dinner. Mm. And I thought to myself, now why would I think of something like that when God takes care of just the birds? They don't ever walk around going, I wonder if the Lord is going to give me something to eat. <laughs> they don't ever worry about it. They swing on the lines and do what they do, do they not? You ain't never seen a bird walk around going, I'm stressing if I'm going to eat. Not really. And so I had to think about that. And I was like, you know, Lord, let me go back. And I had to apologize and said, you know what? I took my eye off the prize. And so today I kind of wanted to piggyback off of you all's Sunday school lesson, okay? <coughs> today you all talked about what? Who can give it to me? Well, Either one of y'all. Um, we you? talked about a uh, kid named Xavier and book. Getting adopted into the family of God. Getting adopted into the family of God. Hmm. That's kind of deep. That's kind of deep because we have some of our members here that have been adopted into the human family. You know, I'm adopted mother and I, it, I take it. It's a serious thing. That means that these are my babies. And I had to think the other day, I got how many babies? Mm -hmm. Eight. Mm -hmm. What's your number one? You got a whole bunch of babies. I got a whole bunch of babies. Now, my eight over there talking about eight. Nine. Mm -mm. Two. Ten. Oh, it did. It, it, Eleven. Twelve. <laughs> Thirteen. Fourteen. Twenty. Forty. Forty? Keep going. Because I had to think about it. I think about my babies that I have paperwork on because, you know, we think those legal documents, that's it. But you all are my adopted babies. Think about that for a moment. You're like, wait a minute, what? Why would we be it? Why would G1 be my adopted babies? Think about it. Why? Why would that be that way? Because God has given me the honor to be able to teach you all, to present him to you all. Did you not think about that in your lesson when we talked about the adoption? What makes you adopted into the family of God? I've never been Would it Never been it? I, I didn't be here on, on the one day. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's okay. That's okay. But well, what did y'all learn about being in the adoption of God? Being adopted into that family. How do you get adopted into that family? By reading the word. Reading the word. I like that. That's good. Being baptized. Being baptized. I like that. There's okay. one more. Accepting God in your life. Accepting God into your life. Even when I think about my kids, it's the same thing when we did adoption. Some of them were babies and some were older. One, they had to do the acceptance. They learned of me just like we're learning of God. Are we not? And they had to figure out, this family's kind of nutty. Do I really want to hang out with this family? And some of them were babies. They just grew into it and just grew right into the nuttiness and went, it's all right for me because this is all I know. Okay? But here's the thing. You learn of them. 
And then you have to profess with your mouth. I want this adoption. I believe in God. He died for me. Mm -hmm. He is my all in all. Mm -hmm. And then here we are Baptists. We do the baptism. That's what we do as an outward show that we have accepted Christ into our heart. And he, God is the ruler of our lives. But why would we want to be in this family? Why would you want to be into the family of God? I mean, this world is... It's some sad things going on. There's homeless people. There's hungry people. We had COVID. People fighting and shooting and stuff. People mistreating kids and stuff like this. Why would you want to even be in this family? I mean, come on now. What do you think? Why would we want to be in the family of God? Because there's If something. this world is like this. Because God, he died for us. Mm -hmm. He died for our sins. And what I just described to you all was this world. What's happening in this world. It's not what God said for us to do. But because we have that free will, remember we talked about that free will, making good choices. You know, when we go to school, we're on our own to make those choices. And our parents count on us to make good choices. But because we get free will, we time to get a little loosey-goosey with it. And that's why these things happen in the world. But here's the thing. I want to challenge you all to think about when you are accepted and you take your adoption seriously and you go in the name of being God's child, what's the benefit? What's the good thing of being God's child? Peace. Peace? Okay. What was the strength? What did Ms. Bree tell you about strength yes, last Sunday? Power. Power. Say it. Say it. Say it. Say it loud. Power. power. It's the power. And you all say, well, what do you mean, the power? Did you all know that when you take your adoption seriously, accept the gifts from mm -hmm. the adoption? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, we already talked about the fruits of the Spirit which are also called the gifts, mm -hmm. the gentleness, the peace, the joy, mm -hmm. okay? Those are the gifts. But did you know there are some other gifts? Mm -hmm. And we all have all these gifts. It's almost like they're all sitting on the table and we're not even unwrapping them. We just look at them. They just there. Just looking there. Who leaves gifts unopened? <laughs> I'm going to raise my hand. We do. We do. We leave our gifts unopened. We leave them on the table, just sitting there waiting for us to say, Lord, I'm ready for that gift. But I want you to think about what gifts are on this table. Now, I told you about the fruits of the Spirit, which I talked about. Love, joy, peace, happiness, patience, kindness, goodness. You remember those? Mm -hmm. Gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. Mm -hmm. Those gifts are still on that table. Now, let me tell you about the other gifts. Y'all ready? Yeah. In your scripture today, Ephesians 1 through 11, you all read it. But I don't know if you all heard about the spiritual gifts. The spiritual gifts that are on our table because of our adoption. And you say, well, wait a minute. Spiritual. Is that something mystical, magical? I need a wand for. Here's the thing about those spiritual gifts. They're on our table. And one of them is the spirit of discernment. You know what that is? Anybody know what discernment me means? I know it's a big word. You know what that means? And our parents have it and we get mad. Mm, I don't like your little friends. Your little friend spirit ain't right. Mm -hmm. Being able to tell wrong from right. Say it. Being able to tell wrong from right. And we as parents, we'll tell you about your little friends and y'all get mad at us because we see it. We see it. You all have that gift, but you haven't unwrapped it. Because right now we get caught up in how many friends we have. Our social status means we got all these followers. 
So we don't look at that person, at the heart of that person, and go, mm, is this a spirit I really need to be working with? Or is this a spirit I need to be praying for? Is it with me, or should I be praying for it? Hmm, so think about that. There's another spiritual gift that's on that table. And that's the gift of healing. Healing. And you say, wow, wouldn't it be wonderful to be able to touch somebody who's not feeling well and heal them? Wouldn't that be an awesome gift? Or what about the gift of miracles? You can perform a miracle. And some of y'all look at me crazy like, oh, wait a minute, Minister Dean. That's what the disciples did back in the Bible. Mm. Right? We read about that, right? Mm -hmm. But if we've accepted our uh, adoption of my God, are we not a disciple of his? Yes. But we leaving that gift upon the table. Me, to be able to perform a miracle when it's needed. Think about that. And some of y'all are probably like, man, I could make a million dollars show up. Do you know a million dollars is not a miracle? Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. That's not what a miracle is. Think about it. If you look at the definition of a miracle, it's something miraculous and it's not tangible. Well, there goes that money. There goes that big screen TV. There goes that PS5 and all those things, them Jordans and Jays and all that. It's something that's miraculously happened that's not tangible that moves the heart of the people. Pause for a moment. Because if you're really listening to me, when we passed out sandwiches, what was that? A miracle. Say it. A miracle. A miracle. And you say, well, why was that a miracle? Because I thought people were probably was hungry and they had nothing. But and if we bring it to them, they were probably praying about it, asking God for some food and like some help. There you go. And so, didn't know where it was coming from. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had something good happen to you? And you've been praying about it, thinking about it? Didn't know where it was coming from or how it was going to happen, but it happened. There's your miracle. And we're not the only ones to receive the miracle. We are also to perform the miracle. So not only do we have discernment, we have the gift of healing. We have the gift of miracles. How about the gift of prophecy? Mm -hmm. And you say, well, what does prophecy mean? To foretell of something that's going to happen. And some of y'all are probably going, well, these sound like gifts my mama and my daddy already have and grandma and them already have. Because they have unwrapped their gifts and are living and walking in them. But you all have your gifts still on the table. Still wrapped up, looking pretty, waiting for you to accept it. Now, here's what I want you to understand. These gifts are not like Christmas gifts. Oh, what I wanted, and then a month later it's missing, stolen, broken, missing pieces, tarnished. These gifts are to be respected and taken care of because much is given, much is required. Okay? So a lot of times that's why we leave that gift on the table because we might say to God, you know what? I'm not ready for it. And God will say, my child, okay, it's still here when you're ready. And then you say, okay, well, Minister D, how come I can see the gift in somebody else? Mm. And I want that gift, mm. but I don't have that gift. Well, here's the thing. I'm going to put it to you just like this. I would love to be rich. I would love to be rich. But God knows in my mind, I'm not ready to be rich. I would squander it. I would not use it appropriately. Now, I pay my tithes off of it. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. But the rest of it is going to be missing. 
It's kind of like the people that win the lottery. They broke and within two to five years. And so God knows I'm not ready to be rich. But he does take care of my basic needs. And I thank him for that. Then I said, well, you know, God, I like to be back to high school skinny. <laughs> high school skinny. I didn't say college skinny. I said high school skinny. Mm. And I've been working on it. Don't get me wrong. I've been working on it. And then my little angel had tapped me on my shoulder and said, well, you was kind of a mess there, boo. Are you sure you're ready to be high school skinny? And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like, are you sure you are ready for the attention mm. of being back high school skinny? Mm -mm. And I was like, mm -mm. Oh. Mm -mm. yeah, I'm past that now. Lord, just make me healthy yes. and keep me healthy. Because I was slim, trim, and the mess I was. Okay? And Lord knows I don't need to go back to that. Does that make sense, young people? Y'all like, what? See, y'all living y'all best life right now. Y'all just don't know it's your best life. But you're living it. And so I had to realize, you know what? Some of my gifts I have to leave on the table at times because I'm not ready to use it appropriately. Even me as an adult. But I want you all to recognize you all have those gifts on the table. And it's time for us to start reaching up for our gifts, walking in them using them because somebody is waiting on that witness from your gift somebody's watching you because you're the only Jesus the only God they can see because they're looking with the physical eyes there's somebody looking at you going how are you so smart how do you know so much how are you wise beyond your years and that's because you're using your gift of wisdom. You're walking in your faithfulness. Because with these gifts, he keeps giving you increased faithfulness. God's got it. I can hand it to God. And I don't have to go back and go, Jesus, you got that? God, you got that? Can you handle that? Can you? I don't have to do that. Lay it there and let it be. Because I know in God's timing, it's better than my timing. Because I'm always, let's do it now, do it now, let's get this done, let's do it, uh, da, 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 da. and if it's not done now, I get upset, I get mad, and I get out of character. And when I get out of character, I'm in my flesh. I'm not walking in my adoption. Make sense, young people? Yes. Here's the other thing. Another gift, you get to speak in tongues. Mm -hmm. And you can interpret the tongues. The spiritual language. Remember how we talked about knowing the different ways to say thank you and all that in different languages? Yes. Well, tongues is like that, but it's a spiritual conversation with the master. And you can interpret it. And I've been in churches where I've heard it and thought, man, I wish I knew. But that gift is on my table because I haven't practiced it. I haven't been in the realm where I've needed to use it. And now I'm like, you know what? I'm ready for that. Hand me that gift, Lord. I'm ready to unwrap it. It's like a, a birthday gift. Each year as I get older, as I practice my faith even more and more, I can unwrap another gift. And he just keeps giving me more. So you know like we sing a song, you can't be God given. You can't. But that don't mean we don't need to give. Right. Okay. We got to continue. Because here's the thing. God's gift to us was the Holy Spirit. Was forgiveness. Was the church. Was heaven. And when you think about those gifts, he gave us the Holy Spirit to comfort us as we go through this time. He gave us the gift of heaven. Because that's where our ultimate goal is, is to be with him in heaven. Right. Not to stay in this world here. Right. You know, I used to think when I was younger, wow, that person, 114, and that person, I want to live that long. 
And then I finally had to think about it. If, if I say that I want to live that long, that's saying I want to be on this side. I'm ready to go be with the master. But I want to be with him when he can look at me and say, you know what? You did a good job. Come on, baby. Come on in. I am well pleased in you. So I'm still here. Because medicine needs still messing up. Still got a little more time to fix it. And I'm trying my best to fix it. Because I want God to be well pleased with me. It's kind of like when you're ready to do finals and report cards are ready to come out. Who wants to see them D's and F's? I don't. I don't. I want to see A's and B's. Usually does exceeded the expectation. Went above the call. And those of us that are not in school, we got performance evaluations on our jobs, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I want some threes and some fours. Went outside the box, thought outside the box, was a team player. Thought of the team, worked for the team. Moved the mission of the job. I want God to look at me and say, yes, I'm pleased in you. Yes, you lived out my mission. Yes, you brought them in. You taught them the word. You instilled me in their heart. You dropped that seed and it grew because you continuously planted it. And I need for you all to be open hearted to take that seed. Just like I want you to take the gifts that God has for you for your adoption into his family. Don't take it lightly that you're a Christian. Don't let somebody confuse you with other talk. You were brought up in the Christian faith. You believe in God, the higher, ultimate being. Reverence him. Don't be confused and reverence other things. Reverence your heavenly father. This is November. Using the month, everybody chooses to what? Every day, think of something that you are grateful for. Today is the... Six? Six. So up to today, you should already have six things on your list that you are thankful and grateful for. And I want you to go past, I got shoes on my feet. I got a roof over my head. I want you to think deeper. I go to a good school. My teachers care about me. The adults in my life care about me. Somebody's always looking out for me when I'm not even looking out for myself. Lord, you protect me. Am I going in? Am I going out? I want you to think about those things. Go deep in your gratefulness and your thankfulness to the Father. Because he adopted you. And he picked us before we knew. Mm -hmm. Did y'all know that? You all were picked as his children before you even knew your name, before you even knew yourself. They said, I want that one. I'm going to take that one. I'm yeah. getting that one. I want you. Yep. You're going to run from me for a little bit. But I'm going to catch you. I want you. Hey, Nene, I need you. That's what he said. Ebony, he loves you. Sister Cheryl, you his favorite, and you already know it. Less than highly favorite. Gloria, he loves you. And he tells you that daily. Shariah, he loves to hear from you when you talk to him and when you pray to him. He loves it. He gets so tickled. He loves it. Izzy, he's proud of you. And he's grateful. Of the man you have been. Philip, he said, Hey man, we wrestle, we bump heads time to time, but you are a man of God. And he is so grateful to have you in the family. Sister, sister, he be listening to you, joking with him, but he loves it that you joke with him because he loves your spirit. You are the joy, you bring the joy. Quayla, 
He's that peaceful one. Because he wants that peace. Waylon likes things decent and order. And that's just how our Heavenly Father is, is he not? Decent and order. Mm -hmm. And oh, Usher. Mm. Battling heads mm. back and forth, but yes. Usher, you keep the master laughing because he loves your joyful spirit. <laughs> he loves your carefreeness. He loves how you trust him every day. Usher, if anybody don't know, Usher trusts God every day. He goes to school and cut up, and he trusts God that his life ain't going to be taken from him. <laughs> He trusts God that his mama ain't going to roll up there. Amen, Jesus. So you talking about a brother of big faith. Usher got it. Usher got it. Does he not? Y'all know it. Family. Y'all know it. Y'all know it, right? And some of us be on that, right? Amen. But God just wants y'all to know. He sees you. He ain't forgotten not one, any of you all. He calls you by name. The name he gave you. And you know it when you hear it. It's in your voice. It's the voice you recognize. So the master said, hey, quit running from your gifts. Quit running from the table he has prepared for you. This is your table. You are hungry for these gifts. And he is ready for you to come to the table, feast and dine till your heart is content. Understand me, young people? Yes. Now, that is the close of my lesson there. And I would like for us to do communion. I want us to prepare our hearts for communion. The two young ladies that I asked, would y'all come forward, please? One on each side. As we get ready to prepare ourselves for communion, we remember, we do communion, why? Why do we do communion? It's in remembrance of God, our Heavenly Father. So as we prepare ourselves for communion, we're going to first pray for forgiveness to clear our hearts. Because you never want to take communion with a dirty heart, with a dirty mind, with hurt, with anger, with malice, or any of those things on your mind or on your heart. Because when you're doing this in remembrance of him, that means you recognize him as the higher being. And you remember what he's done for you. Okay. Shamaria, you remember your song you were going to do for us? It won't come to your mind. Anytime you want to start singing it, you can. And if anybody else know it, you can join us. Amen. So let's bow our heads. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we come to you today, Lord, doing as the Bible has commanded us. We are preparing our hearts and minds for communion. Lord, take that hurt. Take that anger. Take that stubbornness away, Lord, as we do this in remembrance of you, Lord. As we go to the scripture, we remember what the bread represents, how they broke your body, how they bruised your body, how they did it, but you still went on with the commandment for our sins, Lord. You made the ultimate sacrifice. As we remember with that cup of wine, we have grape juice, but it's the wine that represents the blood that came streaming down as they pierced you in your side, whipped you for our sins, our transgression, for the things that we did wrong, the things that we did with our free will. We knew it was wrong, but chose to do it anyway. And that was a sin. And Father, you died for our sins. Not to remember them, not to beat us over the head with it, but you cast it into the sea of forgiveness. And Lord, we do this communion, recognizing that you did that for us. So Lord, we thank you as we prepare our hearts and minds for communion. Amen. 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 Amen.